and we're recording. Okay, well, we are in now budget deliberations. We had three um, uh, budget workshops. Now we're in deliberations. This is for the budget. So uh, Gary and uh, Mike O'Neill has done a good job or have done a good job with council scenarios. I think everybody saw it, uh, came in last night and uh, thank you for working on this. Um, I guess, uh, you know, I'll turn it over to anybody who wants to, to start the dialogue. Um, obviously this is something, well, the budget is definitely one to start the dialogue on. Um, but um, you know we do have scenarios. Uh, the town manager did present with his budget workshops or departments that um, there were some cuts that he had made. Uh, I don't know what the total amount uh, came to with all those uh, original cuts that you had put in. Uh, but some of these um, are, are going in that direction. So, uh, I will open it up to anybody who wants to to start off on, on where we can, where we would like to go, where we are at, and and how do we get there. So, um, I guess my first comment would be, you know, we worked pretty hard last year. We did have um, some surplus savings from the Board of Ed. I believe we had some carryover um, funds uh, as well that we were able to work out. We didn't know it at the time, but uh, when we did realize some savings to our um, uh, rainy day fund um, surplus account that, you know, we did, um, we didn't replenish it wholly, but we, we got pretty darn close to giving money back. Um, uh, so that's kind of where we're at. Going into this, um, we started off with a 40.74 mill rate in the beginning of the deliberations of the 2021 fiscal year. We got that down to a 40.69. Um, I'd like to you know, obviously stay at that going below that would be ideal. I don't know if we can get to, uh, you know, a, a less than 40.69, but if we can, we can hover right around that without a increase in the mill rate. Obviously we would like to continue to have services at the level that they are at now. Uh, it just depends on, on how we're gonna get there. I guess maybe for Mike O'Neill, there's a couple questions regarding this is what you know. I brought up a, a couple times, and, and I definitely mentioned it um, when we extended the deadline per the governor's executive order to go to June 30th. <clears throat> we are looking at federal funds. We would like to know a little bit more about those. Obviously, the treasury. I, I don't know if we're still waiting on guidance from the treasury. I hadn't looked uh, to see if there's any guidance out um, from either CCM or cost on that, or from the governor's office. Uh, it was always my understanding that they would come up with the, the, the guidance uh, for municipalities to follow after May 11th, uh, but also whether or not we can consider or should consider uh, the legislative proposed budget versus the governor's proposed budget. Um, so those are some of the, the questions that I have, uh, but we also have... Um, know some work to go through with the departments and, and where we can look to see if we can either trim some more or reallocate some funds or look for additional funding sources for them. So I guess those are the parameters I'd like to kind of work off of. And uh, you know if anybody wants to start some of the dialogue on, on where we can get to that point and, and how we can use some of these funds to get us there. I, 
can answer very quickly um, your question about the uh, stimulus money. We have not heard anything. You're correct that uh, the deadline for U.S. Treasury is uh, the 11th next week. Um, and there, I know there's a lot of uh, organizations, CCM, um, Government Finance Officers Association that are kind of standing poised to uh, to offer an interpretation to the extent that one's needed, you know, for for to help us, you know, understand uh, what it what it all will mean. But we've heard nothing, uh, nothing to date. Okay. Um, well, I don't know if we want to go line by line with the three scenarios that uh, Mike and Gary had worked off of. Uh, bear with me as I'm looking at it on a computer. Uh, I know we had some dialogue amongst our caucus on townwide radio. I don't see in all three townwide radio decreases at all. Um, that's something we can look at. Yep. So, so keep in mind when I put this together, these were kind of jumping off points. There's no, you know, this is what I think you should do. This is not what you should do. It's kind of like these are conversations for discussion. So it's kind of tough with IT equipment and townwide radio. I, so I just put in the number for specific sections with the idea that, you know, technically from, you know, the council standpoint, nothing's off the table, but it's hard for me to, def you know, without going line by line, understand, you know, thousand here, 500 there, 200 there. So I put it all on the table for those two. And professional services in elections. Yeah, that was one that I had highlighted. Over the years, they were around 16,000. I mean, it's jumped. Six, oh, I guess in even years, for an even year election. They go from 16 in an odd year, 32, 13 to 30. I mean, I, uh, I don't, other than the 2400 for LexisNexis, I don't have any notes next to professional services, but that was one that had jumped out. I was thinking that that was a little high for an odd year for elections to come in at. Uh, maybe with what is being discussed at the legislature for uh, absentee ballots is the issue. Maybe that's a question we can ask uh, the registrars but I, you know, I would think that at a um, historical perspective, 1632, 1330, we may even go be able to go down to, you know, 15,000 for them. Um, just a thought, but obviously we would wanna run it by the registrars if, uh, if more than a $4,000 shave would be sufficient enough for them to be able to get their job done this this year and i if memory serves i think a lot of that you know, based off of some of the new requirements in terms of how many poll workers they have to have working at each location um, and then probably some unanticipated costs related to not necessarily knowing what you know will you have a primary will you not have a primary we have COVID um, um, rules still instituted come if it's a primary August or if it's the regular election in November. Um, I do think, you know, they, they, I believe they tried to, if I remember, they tried to base it off of their experience this year, needing to hire extra poll workers and people to process election ballots. Maybe not the ballots, but, but process the uh, results. Ballots for the town clerk. Mike, can I ask a question? Sure. And yeah, just jump in with questions. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Gary, when you and Mike put this uh, these scenarios together, the the first column on the left, the requested, that was what each department head came to you with, correct? So just for clarification, Mike cannot be held responsible for anything that I put in there. I did send it to him, um, but uh, but but I created it, so I take any responsibility for errors. The column yeah, it column says free Mike O review. Correct. <laughs> So I wanted, I wanted, he did get a chance to look at it, but after I had already sent it to you guys. So just want to be clear, you can't hate him. You can, you know, any errors he's not responsible for. Um, that section was actually hidden, but yes, that was, that was just for the operating budget and it might not be dollar for dollar correct, but that was plus or minus my first worksheet when I first did this, um, when I first created it, the departments had given me some where they felt they could possibly cut. And so whenever I had agreed with them, I started building the row and then I put the dollar amount in and then I started doing my adjustments, kind of carving it up based off of what they put. And, um, I hid and that because I didn't, not everyone is reflected there. I added some in, I took some out. So you really, you can't use it. As, uh, it's not as useful. Uh, they, you know, my, where I'm going with the question is that like, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to recommend a cut that you've already taken out, but I would, would I know that? Yeah. So the column that says TM recommends, yeah, that, that's, that should be your first column with, with numbers in it. And that's what my recommendation is in the April 5th budget. So that like, if you took uh pick one, Deputy uh, Planning Welcome Wagon, that was me. Um, I had already cut that to $500. So what you're so, seeing in that first column are my numbers that are in the budget. In the uh, budget workbook, you know, some of the departments, you know, have town manager reduced $100, for example. Uh, are all your cuts in there like that? Um, they should be, but there's a probably occasional like uh, where they, you know, it might say in the left hand column, TM cut reduced X, and it might not be reflected. Like there, you know, there, you always have to build in a question of error, and you know, we go through it and double check it. But but it should. Did you find one that doesn't reflect? Well, I'm just. You we were looking at my radio. We talked about that. You won't see it for the CNEF and CIP. Correct. Okay. Just because the operator. Because of the way the worksheets are set up for that, the details not on those department okay. worksheets. Yeah. In other words, I just didn't want to like recommend a, a ten thousand dollar reduction that you've already taken twenty out 20, for the yeah. same thing. You know. Yeah, and I, it, in fairness, as just to make sure that doesn't happen. Even if I don't catch it tonight, I will go back through and say, oops, you know, I, I've already hit them. Are you sure you want to do it? Or just so you know, you know, this this number was off. Okay. Thanks for clearing that up. Yep. Okay. Anybody else with any questions like that? Okay. I mean, Gary, do you want us, we came up with some scenario, not scenarios, well, we came up with one scenario, but with, you know, almost a, a line by line that was presented to us in the uh, uh, department heads budget. Uh, I don't know if Mary, you want to speak on that? Oh, sure. Let me just pull up my list. <laughs> um, I, and a lot of this is based on the assumption that, um, and you state this in the scenarios, that we can use federal money to um, pay for a lot of the like CIP and C CNEF items. Um, and because some of a lot of it was like removing certain things from that 
Um, but some, I don't know if they're necessary anyways. In particular, like um, Mike had mentioned some of the town-wide radio stuff. Um, one of them was uh, the radio, portable radio replacements. We were thinking we could probably cut it uh, to 20,000. It's 40,000 in the CNEF budget. Um, and last year they only requested 10,000, which we gave to them. So it was just sort of a big jump. So I didn't know if they needed as many, you know, replacements as they're requesting. Um, and the other was like the, the rate, uh, the shelters, those, um, the radio shelters. Um, last year, he said they wanted to replace one a year and that they were like 10,000 each, but they're in the um, budget, it's 20,000 is allocated. So we thought maybe uh, we could reduce that to 10 to if we're gonna stick with his original plan. And then the other question I had was what is the, and I should have asked this obviously when the, you know, Mr. Eichner was here, but the radio system voice logger, like, what is that? I don't know what it is. And I, I just, I guess I didn't notice it when we had our budget workshop, but I don't know if anyone knows what that is um, and how important it is. Um, <laughs> So let's see, um, some of my other items. Oh, and then there was a couple things which it might be in your scenarios, um, but, and I could be mistaken about this, but in the budget workshop um, for fire suppression. Um, can, I, I, can I just, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Can I just stop you? Because why don't we try to address some of those rather than try to oh, sure. keep track of them and come back to them. Okay. Um, let me say this first, generally about the IT and radio equipment budgets. Um, the way that we approach this is we plan at this point in the year for the next year, what we think we will need. And then when we enter into the next year, we, hold off and hold off and hold off. And you'll probably see that when you looked at the projection that, that this year's budget, most of it's not spent at all because you kind of wait and wait and see what you actually need. And then, you know, in the last quarter is when we typically spend those budgets. Um, more of the case this year with radio than with IT. Um, but that's the, the, so that's the general approach. And, and I will also say, that was really loud. Yeah, um, who was that? I heard it at our house too. I'll also say that, uh, I'm sorry, lost my train of thought. I got to regroup here. <laughs> I think like the building's still standing. Um, <laughs> we can certainly uh, afford to give something back on those lines because of that, because of that and because of the fact that we have reserve funds, both for IT and radio, so that if we get into a pinch, you know, we're holding those IT funds for the, you know, to help us with the phone system and, and just emergencies. But again, general answer is, is those are, are wise places to look and we can certainly endure a reduction in both of those. And that was one of your questions. You asked about the voice logger. Voice logger is something that I believe we requested two years ago and we received some funding, but this ended up uh, being a piece of equipment that was uh, much more expensive than, than we anticipated. And that's why the request is in there this year. Um, it is a, it's a, it's a device that records all the radio traffic. Um, it's certainly an upgrade. I, it's not a backup unit. It's, you know, obviously, you know, if we've been dealing with funding on this for a couple of years, it's not something that there's there's you know a crisis about replacing it. But it's but it's something that we believe is necessary. I can't speak to specifics, and it can certainly get more information for you if you need it. Um, but that's what that is, and that's why I think it was two years ago we asked for maybe twenty five thousand. But this this what we ended up 
determining that we needed um, when we kind of sat down and actually had that first round of funding um, was just we needed more money to, to get the right piece of equipment. Um, you said you had you had asked about the UPS upgrades at the radio shelters. Um, again, those are that's something that you know we had a, an idea of of a you know a three year four year plan. We just kind of push that out in lieu of, of some other things, but it's it's something that we don't want to ignore forever. But again, it's it is something that um, you know it's not it's not like some things where we are facing an, an imminent need. Um, to buy something. Help me with help me with you had a couple of other items there, Mary. Um, yes. Uh, so with fire suppression, um, <clears throat> Rich Bailey mentioned, I know he that the fire suppression was under budget a lot, and they were gonna spend some money from their operating budget for this fiscal year to pay for some of the uh, those air bottles and the hydraulic pump rescue tools. I don't know if that was, they were paying for the, you know, for it so that we can take them out of CNEF or if they were just putting money towards it and then CNEF is the balance of the amount. I'm, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I can, I can help you with that. So at the time we put the CNEF budget together um, and kind of the whole budget back in March, um, it wasn't clear what the fire suppression budget would look like in terms of remaining funds. You know, that cleared up a couple of weeks ago. Um, that's when the chief said, you know, we could, you know, certainly pay from remaining fiscal 21 funds for those items, take those out of the, uh, take those out of CNEF. So that was, that was the idea there. And of course, from, Monday night, we have this new issue of the truck that needs uh, the repairs. So I think that, you know, I think the, the one place to look for funding for that is in the remaining uh, fire budget for this year and probably contingency from this year, if not, if not from some other source that, you know, and, and we can help you guide you through the thought process on, uh, on uh, alternatives there. Okay. And Mike, guide me where, uh, let's see, I'm looking at fire suppression and this is the FY 2021 budget projection variances. Now they are just looking at a surplus of just shy of 9,000. Is that correct? Uh, so you're, okay. looking, you're. I'm sorry. I'm just getting to the to the page here. Actually, eighty two dollars in utility, so just a little over nine thousand. Let me let me share what I've got. I just want to. Uh, Gary, could you give me share? Do I have it? Okay, got it. Uh, Sorry to interrupt for a second. Uh, Matt Forrest just emailed. He's having technical difficulties getting on, but he's saying it's on his end. He'll do his best to keep trying to get on. Was that the big noise? No, I believe that would be the newest uh, vehicle modification that people do now, which would be uh, adjusting the muffler to make it sound like a rapid fire. My assumption is Matt Forrest is okay and safe wherever he is. No, without internet. <laughs> Mayor, is this the page you were looking at? Uh, I was actually just looking at page one of that projection variances detailed by department. But that we can, yeah, that one. But we can go down to fire suppression. Yeah, it's better to look at the, we let's let's look at the whole picture here. Um, 
So we're projecting, uh, this is, you, as you can see, it's quite precise, $8 left at the okay. end of the year. Um, but that assumes, and oh. so, you know, we're kind of, we're projecting fully expended, but the, the thought process behind that was that we would pay for as much of, of any CNEF items in the 22 budget as we could with any remaining funds. So that assumption is built into this projection. And I think the last time we looked at it, we thought that, um, let me try to, Share something different here, bear with me. So I just want to get back to those, that's those CNEF items. So we had, I think the thought was that we could cover both of those items, the 40, the 40 and the 15 from remaining funds. Okay. Where do you see that? Is that in this document? Coming back. This document, Mayor? Yes. Well, it, it is in the sense that, you know, in, in any given analysis, we can only do and document so much. Um, it's here. You know, this, so this is. This is this column is our estimate of, of what expenditures will look like at the end of the year. And then this is what the variance is, you know, remaining funds. And again, you know, we're saying this is zero. Um, so uh, what I explained before that, that uh, those two items from CNEF, we're, we're assuming that in all of these remaining funds, we'll have enough to, to take care of those. How much is that? I can't see it, Mike. How much is? That total right where you're at. It's basically, here's what's left, Tom, after our projection. So it's the, oh. it's the whole budget, it's 344. Oh, okay. And again, I, I, you know, so just the, the mechanics here, what we did was that original sheet we gave you was had these three columns, which is this, the current year budget actual and the variance, and then so then we, we created this column, which is a, uh, a forecast of what this would look like, what we think it would look like at the end of the year. So this is what we think the total expenditures on each line would look like. And then this projected variance is what we think would be left on each line based on this estimate and this budget. So that's where when you go to the bottom it's the 598, which what we tried to do on the front page, there's the 598. We tried to just in, in simple terms indicate to you, that's what we think will be left. And this is these are the major components. So when we do something like this, we try to find big pieces that we can identify. And then, and then we just find an all, we call, we say all other, you know, and just plug plug the difference there, you know, you can, so, so we tried to identify. So, so the story here is this, uh, we budget 340 for contingency. We don't project that to be expended. Let's, let's keep the thought of the, that fire engine repair out of, out of this analysis for a moment. So, you know, cause that's not considered here. So we, we say none of that contingency is expended we have $611,000 of uh, salary, you know, primarily from the vacancies that we had um, during the year. That number, when you think about it, should be offset by this number, which is our overage in overtime for, uh, you can see that down here, for physical services and police, okay? So there's sort of a, a net, uh, not quite $400,000 in salaries that we're seeing at the end of the year. And then we've also got the, uh, the overage on the, on the attorney fees, legal fees lines. So those are really the big, and, you know, and then we got a little odds and ends here, but those are, those are the biggest chunks that, that are driving whatever we will see left at the end of the year. You know, cause this is, that's a real number. 
you know, we didn't, I don't think we added anything to that. That's actually overtime um, incurred. You know, it's certainly the bulk of it. If, if we may have added a bit to it as an estimate. And then same thing here, you know, we kind of, you know, even at this point of the year, we sort of know where our vacancies are and what to expect uh, through the end of the year. And then, and then the, that one too. So that's, that's a, you know, that's a pretty good estimate. You know, there will be, you know, I think that's low, you know, it'll be, that'll be a little bit higher, right? Cause we have things like um, sort of discretionary lines for equipment and other things that, um, you know, we don't, we don't spend those down just because they're there. <laughs> Has that message been brought to department heads? Not formally. No, I mean, Gary, do you want to, I don't, not, not to, not in, you know, I've had informal discussions, uh, kind of one-offs with, with different departments. I mean, in terms of having them not overspend? Not spend down so that they have a zero. Yeah, they. <laughs> That's not they, part of the culture anyway. They don't do it here, yeah. Yeah, those, those horror stories that you hear, and, you know, I, I did grant funding for nonprofits for, de you know, for years where it was, well, if you don't spend it, then you're not going to be able to get it next year. That's that, that's not a thing here. They, um, you know, what you do get occasionally and what, what Mike O'Neill pointed out is he's very good at not spending because he doesn't know what expenses he's going to have at the end of the year for like technology needs. And then you might have a spend down then saying, okay, well, we made it to the end of the year. So I'm not as concerned with a major, you know, issue happening. So, okay, now is the time to release it. But nobody spends just for the sake of spending it out. Good. In the salary surplus of six hundred and twelve thousand, roughly, are those positions budgeted for? So, I mean, I don't want to leave a hole. Like, if we we use some of that six hundred and eleven thousand dollars surplus, but then we go and hire to fill some of those next year, they're already included in the budget, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's not a doesn't leave us a hole. Okay, so just going back though, and maybe explain it. I'm just trying to figure out if you go back to fire suppression, they're looking at an $8 projected variance in the positive. So again, where, where do you think we would be able to pay for some of the rescue tools and air air bottles from that. That's well, okay. So we would look at uh, where we were at the end of uh, the end of March. So right here, for instance, that's a clothing line, which at the end of March, we had you know, $8,700 left. You know, here's an equipment line, $24,000. So what we're saying is, you know, and that's, that's really, you know, kind of, I think that's the number where, where we took those CNEF items and at least part of them and plugged them in there. Um, but that's that's where this is this is real this is real variance in this column. Gotcha. So and then and then we so we look at that and we say we say we're certainly not going to go over because we know we've got extra money there. So we're going to go right up to let's just assume we spend it all out because we know we've got things that we've talked about. Um, from CNEF that that we would use any any leftover funds we would use on those items. Got it. Okay. So you could put that the air bottles into the equipment line. I think I think he's saying he already did, Mike. It, well, it well like if it, you're talking about 22, we would just take it out of CNEF and reduce CNEF by that amount. I guess that was my first question a while back was, is this, are, are they already accounted for in this column number three FY21 variants? Yeah, so the, the, the struggle we have, you know, the, the challenge in, in with all these numbers and columns is, you know, right on, on the screen now we're looking at 21, but we're talking about 22. Gotcha. So it's it's in here but the the exercise of what were the changes that uh, you would make to the 22 budget is sort of a it's not part of what we're looking at here this is just this is just the 21 
this is just to sort of help us understand and work with that that 500 and some thousand dollar surplus that we think we'll have. Gotcha. Okay, so those, and you would, and it was two hydraulic pumps for 40, 20 each, was that it? Does that change for everyone when I do that? Do you see Hang C on. and E F? No. You just, you see the same screen? Yep. Okay. Have to, yeah. Do I have to stop and start again? Is that how that works? All right. So I think the change we're talking about, you know, if we, you know, I'm sure everyone's interested in getting into real uh, items that we can include. Uh, we, with those two, those two come off. Now, <laughs> they do. Yeah, the only other thing we got to add into this thought process is the, is the fire engine, the repair. Mm -hmm. But that, but I think it's safe to say there's enough money, you know. If those are, you know, the first, there's room for both. There's room for everything. Those two items and, and the fire engine repair in the $500,000 surplus. Okay. And what are you budgeting for, for the fire truck? The 169 or the 200? 210. In uh, coming from... Well, I, I haven't oh, no. put pen to paper on that. I mean, with whatever the number is, you know, that was approved is what will, that's what will encumber and, and. Okay. What did you say, Tom? 210? I thought it was 210. Yeah, I included a contingency simply because, you know, my experiences with whether it's construction or mechanical, when you start pulling things apart, you tend to come across things that were unanticipated or now's the time to address it because you've got, you know, the labor related to removing something is already there. So replace it while you can. So I built in a contingency. Have, have we decided if we're going to split it from one year to the other? We're going to pay part of it in this year's budget? Or you hadn't gotten that far? Well, again, I think the, the first place to look <clears throat> is any remaining 21 funds. I mean, it seems to me to add it in, to add even part of it into the 22 budget uh, moves the, the entire picture in, in the opposite direction of where I, I presume it's going, right? So I think that the thought is to try to, I mean, I think we, it can be paid for out of the leftover 21 funds. I mean, I'll just tell you my, my, my recommendation is just, we just cut a PO, you know, sign a contract, whatever we're going to do for that work and hit fire suppression for it. It'll be over. You'll see a negative variance when you do the transfers in the summer and you'll transfer money from the contingency fund to fire suppression to cover it. Then the funds are encumbered. You know, they, they carry, they, I won't say carry over. They, they do not lapse because it's an it's an encumbrance, um, and and we're all set. That's you know that repair is is funded. But then we're we're likely to have very little uh, remaining surplus to go back to the general fund. Yes, because you're going to use it for the CNF. Yeah, and right, and that's the that's the trade off. I mean, you're not going to have. Uh, you're not going to have funds to replenish the reserve accounts, radio reserve, and uh, the vehicle reserve. You know, like we like we typically do. And we're then we're getting deeper and deeper in the hole. <laughs> yeah, but that's all. You know, I mean, I think I think part of the exercise last year was just was was changing this budget so that there was there was less left right at the end of the year yeah. we're yeah. seeing there was 800 last year you know I, I think it'll be more than 500 but it'll, i think it'll be less than 800 
and it'll right. certainly be less than 800 if, if we pay for that engine repair. My, my own feeling is that's, that's the way to go. We should try to have our budget as accurate as possible, not, you know, so, so close that it's, you know, not prudent, <laughs> but I, I don't think we should normally have a million or $2 million surplus. Would you agree with that or? Yeah, I think, I think, I mean, if I'm a taxpayer, it's, it's, it's where I'd rather have the money, right? Not in fund balance or somewhere, but be in my pocket, but it, you, you know, it'll, it will present challenges. I mean, and it's the, this engine's an example of that. Right. You know, it'll be challenging. Oh. It'll be challenging going forward with those reserve funds because, you know, lease payments are coming down. That helps. Um, but we, we've always, we've always gone right back to that surplus in the next budget to use it, right? To, you know, it's not, it's not building, building, building year after year, right. but, but it's always there during the year to use if there's uh, if there's something unexpected. Which I'll just add in because I'll forget if I don't do it and I want the council to be mindful of this as well. Not only do you have the fire truck, but we have the boilers at Hamner that potentially need to address. And granted, we're looking at a number of incentives we might be able to get from um, Eversource. That, that's another unexpected or unanticipated cost that we're gonna run into. Um, so, it's hard to budget for emergencies and uh, deputy mayor, I, I, as a taxpayer, I also agree with you, right? You wanna to try to keep that as narrow as you can so you're not overtaxing. Um, you know, the, the delicate balance is how do you make sure you're, you've got what you need in case an emergency comes up. Right. It is about these projections I think are, um, as Mike said, they're, uh, they err on the side of conservative. So there may be some extra coming in that's not in the 590 or whatever that number was. Yep. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. It's, yeah. You got three months left and contracts can go under or go over. So you, you, you might be okay. I guess I would just let me. I, I kind of had a, a better way if, if we're going to use saving yeah. energy. Just going to point out he's saving energies. I like that from a finance director. Not Work anymore. I should have just left it. Um, if we're going to pay for the fire engine out of this year's budget, the, the more appropriate way and this is just this is a little esoteric is to is really to create a project in CNEF and then and not sort of distort the fire suppression budget but just I think what you would see then we could you know I think I think given the authorization that um, that you passed on Monday night I mean it's 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 as appropriate as any other way to just transfer funds increase that transfer line. So for fiscal 21 into the CNEF, create a project there with the funding. And then we come back to you in the summertime, you won't see an overage in fire suppression. You'll see an overage on the transfer line. And then you'd use uh, uh, contingency funds to cover that overage. That way it keeps it just, it keeps equipment costs, you know, re really where they belong in uh, CNEF. Okay. But again, just, just to prepare you for for that, you know, let's let's not expect to see that in the fire suppression budget because it would, it would distort things a bit. Can I just ask a quick question about that? So I, you know, I would like us to use some of the fund balance to bring it back down to ten percent. If we're going to be um, you know, creating this new project for the fire truck and CNEF, which makes sense um, to me, but um, so can we co sort of estimate the fund balance will be going up because the, the surplus and fire suppression will be lapsing into the, will it, does it go into the fund balance or general fund? 
it's really just moving the car, the expenditure from fire suppression to that transfer line. So it does, it's, it has the same effect. It's just in a different place. And, and like I said, for solely for the purpose of, of not distorting the fire suppression operating budget with, with something that big. Right, but in, if, in calculating how much we can take from the fund balance to get to 10%, um, can we estimate that if we, you know, pay for the fire truck out of CNEF versus paying for it out of the operating budget of this year, that the, we'll have a little bit more, that dollar amount more, say 200,000 more in the, that we can, take out of the fund balance? Does that make sense? I understand what you're asking, but it doesn't, it wouldn't matter. Either either option would reduce, um, it would reduce any potential increase in fund balance with leftover funds. It, it's, it's a wash, whether wherever we, the expenditures are going to be realized in fiscal 21, whether it's in the fire budget or the, on the oh. transfer line. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. Okay, I was thinking- so you're bottom, move it bottom line, they're, they're in there. They're, they're gonna come out of that 500 or so that's left. Okay, I got it. Thanks. I guess while we're talking about, I'm just going to the budget. Do we have a breakdown of what, let's see, where was it? Our contingency and where we are right now with that. I think it's street 340 and we haven't used it, right? Correct. What was that, Tom? It's 340,000 and we haven't used it. Okay, where is that? So you see it right there. That rolls into the into the, the 500 uh, here. Sorry. Hang on one second, I'm gonna blow it up. Where are, let's see, let me go back. I'm working off of two screens. <laughs> what page are you on on that one? It's page eight. Oh, okay. Contingency total, 340, 340. It's not an interest bearing. We don't put it into an interest bearing account. Well, no, I, I, any unexpended funds during the year are, are all invested. I mean, it's, the rates are, are, you know, paltry these days, but it's always, it's always invested except for we, working capital. We actually use that in our revenue pro projections the interest. They just didn't exist this year. Okay. We have, we have uh, in July and January, you know, we've got in excess of $40 million on hand, you know, just in the general fund because of the tax collections. Um, Mike, uh, Mike O'Neill, may I ask you a question in regards to uh, the ARP funding? Sure. Um, do, what's the total dollar amount that we're expected to receive? Uh, no, just, just the town side, obviously. Yeah. I think I have that on the... Um... Oh, did I not include it? Is it on your sheet, Gary? Huh. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh, uh, two point five six seven. Okay. Yep. And then, and how? And we have three years to spend that. Well. Yes. This is what we're waiting to. 
find out. And we think there's 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 also something they're calling a county allocation. Yeah. Which I think is going to flow this for us, given that we lack a county government the same way, and that number is five million dollars. So again, we're expecting all that to be be cleared up uh, next week. I mean, I do, I do like. I mean, going through the the capital improvement projects. I mean, I'm using that for federal money, so I feel like that's a slam dunk, but using almost all of it in one year gives me a little, makes me a little hesitant. I mean, it's the, I think the goal of the program is to kind of stretch it out and use the dollars for, you don't know what's going to happen and using all, almost all of it up in one year seems a little rich. Agree with that. <clears throat> you know, Tell you from an economic development standpoint, with my hat on, it's you know, to me those dollars have the ability to be used for infrastructure mm -hmm. improvements that could create a return on investment. But I did put it out there as a possible use and a possible scenario for you to think about. I mean, one. I mean, I actually like if it's eligible because I was glad to see that in most scenarios that the. Um, economic development position was in the first two scenarios. But I mean, there's an opportunity that you could bump that time position, attract it for three years and use those federal dollars as well. Which position was that for, Kevin? The economic development. Um, yeah, I mean, bump it to a full time so you get someone that's their whole job, three three hundred sixty five days a year is, is to work on that and can make it contractual that it's a three year contract so that when those funds are gone, you're that's when the contract ends. When we're uh, talking about that department, I I'd like to try and see if we couldn't add back the facade improvement money. Yeah. Uh, yeah. $50, so so. I, I included that as part of the CIP. Um, uh, I kind of put an asterisk next to it with the idea that there's opportunities to bring the CIP money back. Uh, you know, that 140,000, I think Mike had mentioned one of the meetings, there was about $140,000 extra in interest on that CREC fund. You could Council could choose to put that back to fully fund CIP, which would include that fifty thousand for was it fifty for 50, facade? Yeah, yeah. 50. yep. But I'll note that. And I I would just tend to agree with both those points. I think Weathersfield is uh, definitely becoming a a prize for some of these developers to come in. Um, I definitely noticed uh, an absolute uptick in interest. So, you know, despite the fact that we're in, still in a COVID environment and, you know, we have to be weird of how we spend the taxpayers' money, I don't think it's a great time to really take our foot off the gas, so to speak. So anything we could do to add back in those uh, – add back those facade loans as well as even to your point, Kevin, put a three-year contract together uh, for to fund this position – um, and, you know, and, and maybe if they're, they're worth, uh, you know, they're bringing more dollars uh, back into the town that we're spending on them, maybe it becomes a permanent position, but definitely a, a three-year contract to start, I think, makes all the sense in the world. Now, we currently have two positions in the planning department, correct? And are they two full-time positions? Yes. But the, but the, the planning, the planner, Peter Gillespie, his, his whole, um, he only spends like 15% of his time allocated to, you know, economic development. So he's, he's not really a, the same as this job that we're talking about. Well, we would other things that he does that, you know, I mean, would we pull 
all his economic development responsibilities away from him? I mean, economic development, the planning is tied to economic development, but it would be someone who could focus strictly on, right? So he's got someone to delegate. Um, if that person is talented enough, then yeah, he would be able to kind of take his hands off of it just for, you know, managing that person, but also, um, you know, that's someone who could be aggressive. Um, I, you know, I credit Peter for the amount of commissions he's responsible for and staffed and where he is and being pulled in all directions. I think he's done a great job uh, with limited resources. This person would be dedicated to um, handle a lot of the, the uh, forward-facing work that needs to get done. Okay. I have on my list a, a couple other, I'm gonna call them revenue items. I don't know if we can run down that list, but um, the uh, bond premiums we talked about, uh, I have a number 87,000. That's it. Mike could confirm that. No, Tom, you got you got to give credit where credit's due. Remember, Mary. Oh no, I know. Yeah. Oh, he she gave me the list. <laughs> I'm just reading off the paper. <laughs> Just so everybody can see that, <clears throat> you'll if in your books it'll be behind your uh, debt service, but it's 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 that item right there. Uh, there's that's that's the reduction we can we can add it to this fifty eight thousand dollar reduction, eighty seven oh eighty six. And then. Wait, wait, one quick thing about that. Would it be better for the budget to put it towards capital projects instead of debt service? Uh, the only consideration there is that uh, it really, because that we got that uh, from the bond issues for the high school, it really would have to be something that was uh, at, at the high school. Oh, okay. It could absolutely be used for capital projects, but but you have to be mindful of of the authorization, you know, of the when the bonds were issued. Okay, I don't think there's any projects necessary at the high school, so we'll just maybe keep it in debt service. Oh, does it have? Can it go to any of our? maintenance of the high school no it has to either be for capital or to offset the debt service for the high school the other uh item i had was i guess it's it's still up in the air, but an increase in ECS funding of 656,000. So obviously we don't, we don't know what the real number is. And I think the prudent thing to do until we do is to stick with the lower number. And that just, that's just, that's just budgeting for me. I mean, that's my outlook on that. You just don't want to, you know, and again, I think there's people in this group that may, you know, if there's, if there's, you know, thing hasn't been approved, but people, you know, we can rely on have a high degree of competence, you know, that's, that's something different. You know, if you're just asking me what I would do if, if I was proposing something to you, I would just, I mean, I play it the easy way, which is the lower number. Um, is this something that 
we think we might hear of, you know, in the next couple of weeks, or is that Mike? No. You have any insight to that, Mike Rell? I, I could defer to Kevin. Uh, it depends on what they, uh, when they want to start tackling the budget. So uh, they've got what, a month from today, or what? A month from uh, let's see. You got to even just think of it as like it's more like three weeks. Yeah. And they got to block two days out to do it because they have all the implementers. And to be honest with you, Mike, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the the legislature comes out with a budget that gets vetoed by the governor and then we go into special session because they're going to play that cat and mouse game for a little while. Yep. But, I, you know, but in the end, I think, I don't think municipal dollars will be an issue. So we'll at least have an idea of what the final product will be in the next three weeks. Right. And what do we, June 9th it ends, legislation, legislature ends June 9th, yeah. mm -hmm. or session ends June 9th. And that's the same story for those MRSA funds, 118 eight. We should not count on that either. Yeah, I mean, it's all tied into- It's all baked into the same, but yeah. Numbers are going the wrong way. But if we, so what could we do though, if we do, if we pass our budget before a state budget is adopted and signed by the governor? And it does come with additional MRSA funds and um, ECS, Would does that, it's we're the pass through for that, at least for the ECS to the uh, to the board of ed. So, if we budget with the current governor's projected budget or uh, you know proposed budget, <clears throat> does that funding then go to our uh, fund balance? Yes. it would reduce whatever uh, fund balance might be used in the, in the adopted budget. Gotcha. But you can't, you can't count on those numbers for your budget. Right? You have to make your budget work without that. Correct. It's, I mean, you can put either number in. I mean, I would put the more conservative number in to avoid the problem of a shortfall. So another thing on our list that we are we're looking at is um, spending that 140,000 in the correct trust toward capital project or capital improvements. Is that I guess could just go to CNEF or something to offset that? Versus versus restoring any of those, you're saying, just use it to. To reduce the the proposed capital projects. Oh well. So what it is the the one forty is yeah. an, it's an alternate source of funding, right? Um, outside of the general fund, so you can keep the same. You know, so, so what we did was we had the list. I'll call it nine hundred thousand. It was just short of that. Usually mm -hmm. nine hundred. We reduced that by one forty, and presented that. And it, with with offering also the, the thought process of restoring those projects 
but funding them with the 140,000, which is outside the general fund. So we send send part of the money from the general fund and the other part from CREC and then over in the capital project fund, all those come together and all those projects get funded. Right, well, I know some of a, a couple items will be removed, the fire suppression stuff. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I think, you know, okay. I, and, I, and I think we wanna restore the, um, the facade improvement program, um, okay. but I don't know. I think the important thing is to, with the with these correct funds, think about them only in conjunction with capital projects and not see oh. any. Okay. In keeping with what that trust was set up for. Okay. Well, I guess it maybe but I. But there's plenty have... there to, you know, to 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 fund it. Of course, you know, it still sort of saves you what you what you want to save. As an alternate funding source, there's plenty to. Okay. Mike, how did we use that 140,000 last year? So this is, so the, the policy has been, so the idea, as I understand it, when the trust was set up, that the taxes on that property were roughly taxes, tax revenues were roughly $90,000. That, that was the idea behind, behind the 2 million. So we put that into the trust fund to earn interest. And um, we always, as to the extent that the balance in that account is over two million, we we pull off up to ninety thousand dollars every year um, of that excess and put it into the CIP reserve. So we've done that. We've done that every year. Um, it's earned enough. Um, but it, a couple months ago, we looked at the balance and it was doing quite well. So there was 140 of, of over the 2 million. So we pulled that out of the investments and put it into the cash reserve, still in the trust, part of the trust. But we kind of pulled it out with the idea that just to earmark that as excess funds um, that could be used at the, at the council's discretion. So it's, it's, a, it's sort of an exception to what's been done in the past because of you know, the, the, the fine performance of the investments over the last year. Okay. Really just, they're gonna just add to that revenue other than tax levy line? No, no, because it's it's not general fund revenue. It's a it's a source of funding outside of the general fund. So what you end up doing is reducing your expenditures in the general fund because you know you can pay for some of those expenditures out of this alternate source of funding. So you get all the projects, you just don't have to fund them all out of the tax levy in the general fund. And so we'd probably do uh, an additional motion at adoption, just to make that clear that, that the council was also authorizing the use of correct funds um, in the amount of X for particular projects. And that way that we'd, we'd have, that would give us the authorization to move the money out of the correct trust into the capital projects fund for particular projects that you would des you would designate. <clears throat> uh. And Gary, in your budget, 14,000 for recruitment. What is that for? Hang on, let me turn to it.
All right, so that's advertisement for positions, uh, the cost for oral panels, uh, for the hiring process, pre-employment physicals, um, drug tests, pre uh, police pre-employment physicals, which are all part of it. So all those costs sure. to bring people on. Gotcha. I think I might have included shaving that slightly. Yeah. And tuition reimbursement, we pay out of our budget to the police and then three other unions. Correct. Had we never done that before 2020? 21, the last year's budget? No, I believe it's been in there for, I mean, for every contract that I've negotiated and I think I'm on four out of the seven that was in there previously. I don't know if it's, it might not be reported on the sheet, although it looks like it does go back all the way to 1718. Might've just gone up. Maybe it's quite possible we just didn't you know, what you're seeing is actuals versus budgeted. So it depends upon any given year if they're, um, how many people use it or take advantage of it. Right now, more people have been taking advantage of it, at least in certain departments I've, I've noticed. And what is it for? Tuition reimbursement. So if they, if, you know, if they're going to school for, um, to improve their skill set based off of their current skill uh, and current employment, uh, we'll reimburse them if they get good grades. It's kind of an incentive for them to constantly be improving and growing and um, you know, this way we get the benefit of their skill set and an improved skill set. It's in the union. When it's going to college or taking additional classes. Sorry, Mike, go ahead. I was just gonna say it's in the union contracts. It's contractual, yep. Okay. Gary, I know this is, it's a union contract and, and all that. Uh, just jumping on that, is there a requirement that if we're giving them tuition reimbursement that they have to stay with us for a certain amount of time, like they can't get the reimbursement and then leave? Yeah, I believe and there's a reason. Within a certain time, they have to like pay that back. Is there like any of that kind of verbiage in there? I will double check, but I believe they all have some kind of caveat. Um, but I might conf be confusing that with the 818 contract from my previous employer. Um, but I will actually double check that while we're uh, while we're going through stuff tonight. I, I, I know through. that's kind of you know to the left, but I just wanted to. Yeah, we we usually do so that they can't you know jump. But the dollar amount that each person's associated with it might be a class, right? Or you know, a couple of certificate training classes. It's not necessarily like we're paying for someone to get a master's degree, um, you know, or a law degree. It might take a, it might take a law class, and that might we might give them a thousand dollars towards that class, but we're not financing their education. But I'll see what I can find while we're talking. On their, uh, on these other tabs, the CIP and the road fund, both of them they have in yellow use federal money. Kind of like a, just a thought. How much and, you know. Right, that. so if you, yep. I, uh, the way I calculated it, and again, this is, this is not a recommendation, it's just a suggestion of how you might want to consider it. The, the tricky part without knowing how you can use the federal dollars, there's a lot of ifs. Um, and personally, you know, I'd love to figure out a way to use those funds for a greater return on investment or leveraging other assets. But if you, you know, if, if we're trying to keep costs low, again, it's one time of absorption. Um, I think I took the 2.5 million as an example and said, okay, well, the road fund, 
our portion of the road fund, not including state grants and other assistance is like one point, call it 1.2 million. So out of the 2.5 that we're getting from the feds, if it's focused only on infrastructure, rather than financing the road fund for 1.2, you could use 1.2 million of the American Rescue Plan funds. Um, same thing with CIP. If you want to bring that back up to the 896, um, you know, you, you've only used 1.2 of the 2.5. So add the other 900,000 there. That would leave you with, I don't remember the exact number, like three, $350,000 that you could allocate to a project, an infrastructure project. Um, again, it's not overly creative. It's just, okay, you know, here's one way you could do it. Um, not the only way to do it. It may not give you the biggest return, um, but it's something you could do. Assuming you're restricted to infrastructure projects only. In the 2021-2022 council scenarios, line 62, officer for 117,000, officer one. Yep. Um, without, I didn't want to skew the dollar amount below, but essentially when talking to the chief coming up with like a one, three, 5% cut or anything, you know, you, with, with larger departments, you almost have to break out operational versus other. Um, and with the police, if you look at a, at a percentage cut within their department, you get to a point where. Um, the only way to have a magnitude or a change of magnitude is to cut an officer. That's 117 grand. That was, you know, the chief's comment. Not that he wanted it. Was you know, to to reach, a, you know, three percent of ten million dollars. That's that's a large number, and the only way you're going to get there is through a body. You can't you can't shave off, you know, 500 there, a thousand there, 1500 there, and get to three percent of a large number or five percent of a large number like that which is why across the board cuts are very difficult to do and you should really shy away from them from a, from a government operating perspective. So I, rather than throwing $117,000 in there, which would throw that bottom number off, kind of left it as, a, as an earmark, you know, to think about within his department. Gary, with that 117 being, I guess you want to say the 3% or so, um, would there be a way, I, I know the process of operating with overtime and why we do it, but would there be a way to tighten that up? Because um, that's, that's, you know, that's almost $700,000 in overtime. So is there a way to, you know, maybe just in the department, maybe just, hey, like, this is what you can do and you can't go over this point blank. The, um, the Just problem with doing I, that, I looked, I looked at the breakdown of it, and you know, with our officers, um, and and looking at the past of how many, um, I, I, it, it seems like it's consistent throughout the years of how much, but I, I just know from on the Navy side, it's the same thing with the budget. Like, hey, we're giving this much all every year, so let's make sure we hit that number. I just want to make sure that we're not in that. You know, this is the way we've done it, so let's keep on doing it that way. So I'll start with the, uh, that's a great question. Uh, I'll start with the first part, which is you can never in the problem with emergency services or emergency response, you know, it's the reason why we have a certain number up there is we've kind of learned over time. This is what on average it's gonna be. Um, the reality is nobody's getting extra overtime just for the sake of overtime. It's usually to cover to fill shifts. Um, so, you know, could you reduce it? I think last year I cut them 40,000 in OT um, and the problem was, which we knew would happen, hey, listen, at the end of the day, if we, if we need officers, they've got to come in. That's just how it is. As, as it is, we're on minimum staffing levels most nights. We're not critical, but we're at minimal. Um, and that, you know, the fewer officers you have out there, there's a lot of concerns with that. Um, so is there a way to address it? There may be, um, but it requires a complete overhaul of how we're operating over there and a, and a really a deep a deep dive to understand what the impact would be. So if you're already at minimum staffing levels and one person calls in sick, now you're at critical, 
you end up bringing someone in um, at time and a half. You cannot anticipate, especially with COVID, we had a lot of officers who um, through you know, interacting with individuals who tested COVID positive within 48 hours, we quarantined them. Right, right. You get two or three officers. I don't want to say how many officers are working at any given time because it differs, but in any case, if you have two officers who end up getting COVID and they have to be out, now you have to call in two new officers to work OT. And as it is, we're already short staff. They were probably filling a shift somewhere else. So now another officer ends up. So um, when we so add- domino effect. So when we add officers, I know we consider how much it is to train them and, and, and any employee, um, how much it is to train them, how much it is for pension, how much for benefits and, and, and everything there. Um, with the last budget, Chief said that they're looking to hire two more police officers. Does that um, adding personnel decrease anything with overtime or is that just like a wash kind of thing? Yeah. So the two that when he was saying we're looking to hire two new officers, that's not to expand the number of officers. That's to fill two existing vacancies. Got it. Okay. Um, All right. So it's it's not. Now, I, he and I have spoken for the last two or three years about trying to get two or three more in to the budget, but not to sustain that level, but simply because at one point we had, you know, I've lost track at this point, but 12 to 15 officers who were eligible for retirement within you know, the last two or three years, which means you could literally lose a third of your police force if they all decided at 25, I'm out. Um, and we had a number who did, you know, and we thank them for the, we'll that with the state right now. <laughs> but it's, but it's one of those things where, oh my God, you literally could have in the blink of an eye, a third of your force decide to retire. And without with the amount of time it takes to get a new officer in trained through the academy, through the field training office and available to be out on their own, you know, you're nine months. Um, that doesn't even include the hiring, pro the full hiring process. So, um, and I would like, a, I would, I mean, I would love to support to put enough officers in and I understand the process and I understand the issues right now. Um, I just, you know, for, if, if I wanted to add more officers, I would say, oh, hopefully adding this many officers and getting into a full force would reduce some of that overtime. That's, it's just, it just seemed like that's like the biggest number of overtime. And obviously that's the police department. So you want to have the people in place when you need them. Um, just trying to see if we, if there was any way to just tighten that up. Yeah, it's a good question. And I am by no means the expert in the field, but um, you know, the chief and I have had very long conversations about it and um, you know, other departments and, you know, he'll, he'll explain stories of, you know, other towns where the council has said, well, if we give you five more officers, will that drop overtime? The answer is it, it may, by what percentage can't tell you because in any given year, again, you don't know who's gonna call in sick. You don't, you don't know, um, you know who's gonna get injured. Um, you know, in theory, the more officers, the less overtime, uh, but it, you know, it it's usually has to be a big enough number to drive overtime down. So you have that, well, in order for me to get five in, it's gonna cost me, and I'm, I don't, I'm making the number up, $750,000. You're probably not gonna see a $750,000 drop in your overtime. So it, it probably needs to be studied um, and evaluated um, you know, to see if we have the best rotation. But there is also a quality of life component too that you have to measure for the officer. They don't wanna be working. You know, Everybody thinks, well, I can't wait to get all this overtime. It's exhausting. It's physically and mentally exhausting and you burn them out. So, um, you know, you, you want to be careful. You don't want someone who's working two back-to-back -back shifts, um, you know, constantly. They need a break too. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate yep. that. Along that same vein, there is a trip, Honor Guard trip to Washington, D.C. in their budget. I think it's like 1300 Uh are the officers paid overtime when they're on that trip? I don't recall the answer to that. Um, I don't believe they make overtime for it. I can look into that. I mean, just the, the line item itself is $1,300 for the trip. I'm, I'm assuming we didn't do it this past year because of COVID. We have the line item in there for again, $1,300. Just don't know if we pay salary for them while they're there. 
They probably get salary because um, I think that's considered part of they're designated to that. But let me, I don't want to speak out of turn. I, let me find out on that one. We had ammo on our list also. Oh, yes. Yep. Go from twice a year uh, range training to once a year and still be compliant and <clears throat> cut that budget of ammo in half. The only concern I would have with the ammo budget is we would want our um, department fully trained on the use of their, their firearms. I mean, that's the thing in the military, we always get hit for that about ammo, but ammo is a big thing with keeping your rounds. You don't wanna be under rounds. So I, I'm just, I would I would walk lightly on the, the cutting the ammo thing. Well, I'm talking about the, you know, some departments certify four times a year, some twice a year. And I understood the chief said the, the, the state requirement is once per year. He did. So. I'll, I'll find out the certification. My personal belief is I, I want my officers to be as trained as they possibly can be, but I will ask the chief. I assume it's not on the list, so he's not in favor of doing that. Um, and, and Gary, I know, I know we, we we talked about this ad nauseum last year, and so I won't I won't waste too much time on it. But when Sally uh, made her presentation to us, she mentioned um, a, a number. I can't recall the number. I want to say it was the whole removals uh, uh, had to pay for this year, um, and with lease payments where they are right now. I, I mean, I still, and I know it's not in your budget, but if we could just do like a cost benefit analysis, whether if we, if the town purchases the bucket truck and versus what we were paying Eversource this year um, for removal of and replacement of these poles, I, I just feel as though if we could do this in house, it would be saving the town money. We just remove that payment to Eversource from our budget and then plop in the the lease payment, and not to mention the um, streetlight uh, repair and replacement as well. Uh, thanks, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Gary, but the Eversource is not the one replacing the poles. Uh, it's Susan Higgins or somebody like that. Or yeah, it's whoever, whoever this, the yeah, whoever the contractor is. Higgins, yeah, yeah. yeah they also understand that we still have to sub out the disconnect portion of it to Eversource. We have to pay a fee for them to de-energize the pole and then re-energize the pole. Which yep. is fairly expensive and we there's no way around that from what I understood. Correct. I think the savings is really on the, and I don't have it in front of me, but it's the cost of, you know, the cost of the pole is what the cost of the pole is, but we we have an electrician you know who's on site we have someone who can install the pole and do all the wiring don't quote me i want to say it was like a thousand dollar savings per pole or you know something like 1500 if we pay for higgins to do it versus us doing it you know the cost of the truck would be x mm -hmm. um, but i i can pull it together i, I probably have just, it just just back of the napkin you know what i mean i know this this is this is kind of pie in the sky stuff but it's like i'm just trying to be cost efficient here yeah yeah, I, I have I have last year's sketch. I just you know it probably needs to be updated and cleaned up. I, and the only reason why I bring it up is when Sally mentioned it. It was the number of, that we had to replace this year was was considerable. Well, I think she was going to get uh, that information as to how many poles we replaced and for what reason. Yeah, she yeah she had mentioned the number. I I, I thought I wrote it down, but I didn't. But yeah, I think you're right, Tom. I think because it's it has to do with not only just rot, but also car accidents and whatnot. Right. Yeah, it was 
I think when we originally did the estimate, it was based off of wood poles, their age, where they're located, and what it would cost to do a certain percentage per year to get them get, get them done. I'll I'll uh, I'll touch base with her. I think you have that like a typo in there for that. Should so, I add so, an extra zero or take one out? No, you have you have a bucket truck listed. I do. It was, okay. yeah, but that's not, that's not in his though. That's just the, that was the request. No, on this, uh, see, Mike O'Neill didn't review this. That's why there could be a mistake here. Hold on. I think I have it right. You, uh, where are, are you on the CIP page? Or yeah, CNEF? Yeah. CNEF. Yep. Yeah. It says bucket truck. Yep. But it says town manager recommends $0. Oh, okay. So I see. So I cut it before it got to you. And then the F-150 was, was an F-350 with a plow. Uh, yeah, I think I, I nixed that one too, right? Right. So, you know, it's not often that Tom likes to buy vehicles, but I like to figure out a way to put the F-350 truck with a plow back in. Tom, can that do um, can that do roads or just like parking lots and whatnot? Yeah, that will plow roads for the majority of the type of storms that we have been receiving in the last yeah years. It's like a, anything beyond a certain number of inches, it can't do. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's a it's a it's an oversized pickup truck, you know, capable of plowing, you know, Walcott Hill Road or whatever. Yeah. In, in my opinion, it's a little bit more versatile than buying a Two hundred thousand right. dollar dump truck. Right. So, it can do. It can do the cul-de-sacs. It can, you know, it can. It can hit some of the you tighter do, areas. You do parking lots. You could do, you know, a lot of different things with it. Also, you know, off, you know, other than snow, you know, you can use it for all the park work and all that stuff. So. Roads may be. I don't know if it can do roads, but we'll find out. But but in other other seasons, you could probably use it for other things. And then, uh, I don't think you need a CDL to drive it. So that's well, I know you don't need a CDL to drive it because I've driven an F three fifty. At least I don't think I did it illegally. Um, so you you probably have more people who could use it. I will. Um, I'll get that number and I'll put it back in for like the next round, just so you can see what that what that does to CNEF. What were the gas meters, Gary, in that? Gas detectors, I think. Fire. Is that fire, fire. I think that was fire suppression. Uh, let me pull it up. Peanuts, but where's my CNEF? Well, while we're on that page, what's TIC? Transit fan and TIC, you took it out? Yeah, it's also fire. Uh, I took those out in speaking with the chief, with the fire chief. Of course, I'm going to forget what the acronym stands for. Ticks, what were the ticks? Is that the pager? That wasn't the pager reminder, right? Because there's a pager. No, that's 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 right. in there. I'd have to go back and pull my notes from uh, the meeting with Rich. Um, and for some reason, I can't find it on my in my notebook here. Or, I'm sorry, my black binder. You did spell it out somewhere, so.
Were they the traffic counters? Nope, no. that'd be under PD. Okay. I don't know. I don't Reach out to him. Maybe there's stopwatches. Tick, 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 tick. Boo. <laughs> Tom, I liked it. <laughs> I just reached out to him. I don't know if he's available, but just uh, so I can get the answer. For some reason, I'm drawing an absolute blank as to. He had exp I remember asking him the question and he explained it too. As soon as he says it, I'm going to say, oh, that's great. Whatever it was, you felt comfortable taking it out? Yeah, it was based off of his recommendation. Must have not uh, made that much of an impact on you that you can't remember it. Yeah, I mean, he explained it. I said, okay, sounds good. Take it. You feel comfortable. You know, I, I trust. I trust, but I verify when it comes to my department heads, right? It's, you know, tell me, um, tell me where you can take the loss and I let them kind of guide me along the way. I push back as necessary. Um, and the two that he felt comfortable that we could, we could go a year without. Could we um, switch over to physical services for a few minutes? There, um, there's some, pretty substantial line items in there, like million dollars for Board of Ed building repairs and the uh, town building repairs, 400,386. So before you go there, thermal- kind of, thermal some scale of what bar is like, how, how do you save a million dollars? If or rather, how do you cut a million dollars? How do you cut a million dollars? Well, I'm saying, you know, they have a million dollars budgeted for Board of Ed building repairs. Are we talking about reducing staff or is this materials or subcontracted work? I mean, one pot, one project or a whole bunch of small projects? It's it's like kind one, of what I think a high crest roof alone is like a couple hundred thousand. But that's in, but that's in another area. Oh that's okay. in, yeah, that's in CIP. The the schools you're looking at what seven buildings that are old and there's ongoing maintenance issues that are addressed. So it, it could be you know contractual costs related to hiring a contractor, not our staff. Uh, could be materials, it could be equipment, uh, equipment to fix, that is. Uh, um, nope, explain that incorrectly. Could be related to fixing equipment. Um, there's, a, I think there's a report out there somewhere about a facility review that they came up with, you know, some number of like 30 plus million dollars worth of um, overall facility needs, things that just need attention. Um, and, and we're planning on doing a million dollars worth this year or next year. So that's an option not to do that or. Mike, you know, I, I don't know if the budget. A, a, okay, a pipe breaks. So we're not going to fix the pipe because, you know, we, we cut that out of the budget. It's like, I'm not understanding. Is this like scheduled work or anticipated failures or. I can see, Mike, I don't know if you, because I know Sally was able to adjust as every year as we've, since we've taken over the uh, facilities, we've been able to kind of understand where the costs were. And Sally has been moving them out into correct line items. So I'm not sure if we have a comparison of this, a true comparison of this year over last year. Um, I could see if Sally's available right now to get her on, if you'd like. Um, she might not have, you know. Don't tell her that Tom asked you to call her. <laughs> Or I, you know, I can reach out or I can text her, but. Yeah, looking, I, so this is, this is just via Board of Ed facilities. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna be able to answer your question, but just, I mean, just in terms of, you know, what we're looking at here. So I think we're talking about, 
these lines down here, like building supplies, repair and maintenance, uh, yeah, I don't know where the, the million is, but. Yeah, because I'm actually trying to find it in the black book just to see the binder. It's like it's like four hundred thousand in the in the binder oh. for repair and maintenance. Can you, if you're looking in the binder, can you just there's a number over to the left hand side? Could you just tell me what? It, five two two seven five. But yeah. that, but that's more than I, I don't oh. know if that's just if it's BOE. Yeah, so that's it is more than just. It. So what I've got on the screen is is board of ed only. Yeah. Which is why you see very little in uh, in fiscal eighteen and nineteen. I mean, if you want, I could I can patch Sally in. She is available. You get it for our next get meeting, or yeah, or she's available now. It's entirely up to you. And if she doesn't have an answer, then you can bring her for the next one, too. It's up to you. I mean, I might as well wait to the next time. That way, at least she's yeah. yeah, no need to bother her. <clears throat> Just give her the heads up that this is what we're looking for. So basically, it would be a breakdown of the. <clears throat> uh, Board of Ed building repairs, and the other big one was the uh, town building repairs. She could give us some kind of idea of what those consist of. Yeah, yeah. My guess is she's she's got a either a previous year tracking or or you know what it's been averaging or what she knows is coming down the pipeline that needs to be fixed. <laughs> But she actually texted saying she can discuss now. I guess she feels comfortable. Okay. Okay, hold on. Just let her in. You there, Sally? And if she doesn't have access, we can always um, oops, thought I saw her. Might have to press star six. Oh, actually, <clears throat> I'm looking at this sheet, and the million dollars is not something that we could cut, right? Well, I've got the same number, but it's under the water charge line. Oh, no. Sorry, electricity. Line five two two five four. It's the same number, one million twenty uh twenty thousand. Uh the five two two five four, that's electricity for all those buildings. Yeah, and if you go up above pools, BOE, you go over FY twenty two is 1,020,000. For electricity. Yeah, that's the electricity for seven, for the Board of Ed buildings. So, so maybe not BOE building repairs, BOE electricity. Yeah, the problem is there's, there, the costs are broken out in different places. So you'll find the BOE costs in several, multiple different sections based off of the, um, the org. Right. The it's, org. All, it's all in that left, rightmost column. Yep. 
And then, then on the building repairs, I guess she's saying we could only cut 15,000 out of that. Where do you see that, Tom? Town building repairs for 401,200. Okay. And 15. it's, yeah, 15,000 reduction. For whatever reason, she's having a hard time getting off of un, uh, unmuting, which is kind of funny. I think we, I think we kind of figured out that it's electricity though, right? For that particular one, yeah. Yeah. And, and I cut it 30,000, so who knows, you know, we might get partway through the school year and have to make people shut the lights off for a couple hours every day. Well, Mike, is there any uh, savings from included in our savings for physical services for electricity? No, uh, not really. No. So let's take a look. So actually, yeah, if we think about it, when they closed the schools down, they did that in March, April, and May, and June of 20, FY20. And then this school year, 2021 school year, yeah, they had the buildings open every day. So really, we don't have any savings with that. And, and uh, Gary, in physical services, was there any way to recover any of that um, storm damage cleanup? Yeah, we just submitted, uh, there were two sections. We submitted one for 20,000. Mike, I don't know if you saw the other one that went through yet or if it's gotten to you yet, but there's a no, second. I, I saw the 20. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. So we're, we've submitted um, at least for the 20,000. I actually just signed off on it today. Might've been yesterday. The day is kind of blended, but within the last four, 24 hours, um, the amount of paperwork and requests that we had to complete, um, there's probably $20,000 worth of time just for staff to collect it. I mean, it was amazing the amount of, I've never, I've, I've been doing federal grants for 20 years and I can't believe how much documentation they were requesting on this. Um, and that's all we could come up with is 20,000? No, I think there's a second, don't quote me, I wanna say, Actually, if you hold on one second, you can quote me because I might even have the email from it. But there's there's a bigger one that's coming, uh, but it takes a while to put together. Give me a moment. Gary, can you hear me? Yep, you're there. Okay. I want it. Um, there was also something submitted to DEEP. Um, breakdown of the costs. Thank you for all your help. Uh, you know, I can't tell. For ESAES? It, it, what's that? For, for this, ESAES? Yeah. Was it 200,000 plus or my? I... No, it's like 574,000. Oh, I see it. It's broken into separate categories. So 546, 213 is what we've submitted for. Yeah. That doesn't mean Correct. we're going to get reimbursed for it, but that's what we've submitted for. What's the timing on something like that? Who knows when? It can be a series of months because we've gotten it in before the deadline. Um, and then they review each, each town submission. Um, and so it could be anywhere from um, a month to th three or four months for them to do the, um, to do the review and then really tally up everything that people have submitted. The good news is the federal government's pumping money out left and right. So maybe we'll get reimbursed quickly. The other good, if based on our track record also, we are um, very diligent in what we submit. The 
backup documentation for it. And if previous submissions are any indication, um, we should we should do well. And what would that cover in this? Uh, let's see. We've Doesn't got over, overtime of 153,000. Would that cover that overtime? I think it's reimbursement for our cost from last year. Correct. Right, but are there any, I mean, are there any overages that it would cover or is it just new revenue we would uh, see? It's, we typically handle it that way, the latter, which is to say, just recognize it as revenue. Um, it helps, hopefully helps our positive variance on revenues, which which lapses to fund balance. <clears throat> and your time, uh, Mike, have you seen, going back to, to Tom's question, when we would see that come in? It's, it's hard to say, honestly, yeah. it really is. So we typically, what is it we do in late August, early September with the fund balance? We um, So on the expenditure side, you're taking, you know, because we have a good, very good idea at that point of what's left, it's not expended. And any positive variance on the expenditure budget, those appropriations can be transferred to other lines. They typically get transferred to uh, the uh, CIP and CNEF and used to fund various reserve accounts. And then any excess would lapse to fund balance. So for this exercise, we can't count on any of that, right? For next year's budget? Yeah, the one. I mean, it's really, it's, it's, the proper way to, to treat it and view it is it's a reimbursement for costs we incurred in 21. Right. So the, you, the benefit you get is that it rolls to fund balance. It improves your fund balance. And then, you know, again, you can use, you know, help it gets more fund balance to use if you choose to use it. That's different from the uh, relief fund which was a reimbursement for costs, <laughs> for some costs that we haven't incurred yet. And we're trying to, so I think there's an option with some of some or all of that money, uh, the, the portion we don't pay to the health district to put that in a special revenue fund where it can be accessed to pay for other expenditures, perhaps even help with the 22 budget. But we've got to work through that with the auditors to make sure we're doing it properly. And that's just, we're in the process of that. And which funds are, again, are those, Mike? That's the 300 or so thousand. So we submitted a claim to OPM for the beginning of the pandemic through September. That was the, 20, the 60,000 or so dollars, um, which they reimbursed, except for a couple of small expenditures. And then, so that and so that happened in October or so, um, and they, you know, we were getting ready to prepare that next um, submission through December, the next quarter. And in early December, um, OPM just told all the towns, "Here's the rest of your money. We got this much. We allocated it by town, and we're dispersing it. You don't have to submit any any documentation." And the reality is. You know, we haven't incurred that much in pandemic related direct costs. So the question we're working through with the auditors is is that a is that a reimbursement and unrestricted money or is it is it still tied in some way to 
pandemic related costs. You know, again, which wouldn't be a problem to find costs like that. It's just, we just want to treat it the right way. If it's unrestricted, it's, it's, it's more, it's unrestricted. It's more straightforward. Okay. Did you factor that 300,000 into the budget? No, that's something that's, that's much like the 140 from the correct trust that is it's, it's an option for an alternate funding source to turn right. to. I left it on my, again, that main page for do, department operating. If you scroll down, other available revenue funds for discussion slash consideration, there's 335,600 uh, available for. Okay, relief. CARES Act. Yep. And is that state money or is that federal money? It's federal via OPM. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I thought you'd said OPM. And then when I saw CARES, I'm like, well, that's federal. But OPM is the pass through for that. Yep. Got it. I have a, a question that's related to like physical services and federal money. Um, does is there any like board of ed custodial or cleaning supplies in this budget that could be paid for using the board of ed's COVID funds? That's uh, that's a good question. Uh, you mean the stuff that's coming forward um, that we're waiting to hear about uh, that um, Mike Emmett was talking about? Was it five million plus? Um, you know, we'd have to take a look, um, but my assumption is there's probably operating costs related to, I almost need to see a list of what he said he was using the funds for. It might tie directly to um, custodial costs or electricity or something. They, I'm sorry, Mary, go ahead. Oh, um, they outlined what they are going to spend the money on, the their ESSER two funds at least, and their April 27th meeting and none of it that I recall was directed towards um, like cleaning or anything like that. I think there was maybe 20,000 for PPE um, and the rest of it was, you know, had to do with like social and emotional learning and, you know, behavioral health and that type of thing. So it was not related to, you know, cleaning or sanitation. But it, and I'm sorry, I was taking a note, but the, it includes activities that are taking place within the school, like during the school year or within a school building. Um, well, like the summer enrichment program is something that they're funding with that, or they hope to fund with it. And they're in like different, like technology, you know, some like, uh, you know, technology programs, some math tutors. Yeah, so it says, oh yeah, just the only thing that's related at all to sort of the, you know, pandemic health stuff is 20,000 for PPE and supplies related to mental well being and physical safety. Um, so, but I don't, I didn't know if there was something in like the physical services budget that um, is directly related to, you know, keeping the schools, you know, the sanitation and all the extra stuff they've been doing to, um, you know, for pandemic related stuff in this upcoming budget that should be paid for out of the BOE federal funds. That's a good question. Um, I don't know if we anticipated um, when Sally created her budget, um, you know, that extra use of the school or, you know, if it's summer camps, um, like I said, additional costs, additional cleaning costs, that's probably something I can put forward to Mike, um, or I don't know if you guys need to do it through the Board of Ed side or ask the Board of, your counterparts on the Board of Ed, but um, it's, I'll have a conversation with 
Sally just to see if that was built within her budget. And another Board of Ed related question. I know they have a surplus of 706,000. Um, and I kind of wanted to get, um, Mike, your opinion on how to go about um, accounting for that. And I know last year when they had a surplus, they prepaid their health care or some expenses with that money. Um, is that the route you want to, like we should go this year with that $706,000 surplus or is it better to have it lapse into the general fund and then, you know, allocate the money back in their budget or what, what do you think? Uh, my view of that is that that practice, that should not become a habit, that practice, you know, that was when we discussed that last year, you know, we didn't anticipate um, again, not knowing what the future holds, but it was it was really seen as a one time thing. It just begins to distort, you know, the real cost of things and and the real, you know, amount of expenditures in any given year. You know, when you start to start to shift periods like that, and you know, it's something that you can do. It's proper. You know, it's 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 allowable under the accounting rules, um, but. Personally, if you're you know if you're asking me, I think it's it's something that should be avoided and and just it should be a a, a one time thing. So what it what it does is if if you know so if there's seven hundred thousand and there's some amount of that that's being proposed uh, to be used for the medical fund. Um, and the, and the council decides, you know, not to perpetuate that practice, that leaves the appropriation available for other things for, them, for the board. You know, and if it's not used, it would lapse to fund balance and, and you know, that's where it, where it ultimately goes. Okay, thanks. There's, there's Mary, there's no assurance that wouldn't get spent in this year. Right, that's what I, I was thinking that myself. So that if we were to let it lapse and then cut their budget by that much, they might just end up, or, or and then give them the full amount, then they could just spend it down. I know, I was yes. thinking that too. <laughs> Something to think about. <laughs> I suppose with regard to the Board of Ed, I should also say, you know, I, they're receiving a lot of um, federal funds and, uh, you know, I think we, they did come up with their list of what they'd like to spend their ESSER funds on and then they'd like to use the ARP funds um, for the subsequent two years to pay for the same program. So they, you know, over a three year period, um, and I, you know, I think that they don't want to use any of the federal funds to supplement or supplant anything in their budget. But I do think that there's stuff in their budget that the ESSER funds can be used for. And some of the items that they would like to spend it on, now obviously it's up to the board. So we, even if we cut them, they could choose to, you know, that's up to them where they want to, um, what they want to cut out. But you know, some of the stuff seems like unnecessary, like the family liaisons, which basically have the same role as the social workers, which all the schools have, you know, um, and, you know, they want to replace, start replacing their smart boards, starting with the older ones, but they never said there was a problem with them, just that they're older models, so they want to upgrade them. You know, some of this stuff, I think, uh, the, you know, isn't necessary and that money is better spent and some things that are in, already in their budget to supplant things in their budget. And um, I think in the past, uh, I think that Emmett has uh, said that the funds are not meant to 
supplant, they're supposed to supplement. That's actually not the case. And, and he acknowledges that um, at, at his at the last Board of Ed meeting, he did say, you know, if 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 the council was to cut their budget, then they would just look to the ESSER funds to, um, you know, prioritize the efforts that, you know, within the ESSER grant that they had come up with their, their priorities and they would, um, you know, likely just cut out a few of those items in their ESSER fund wish list and use the money toward their budget. Um, so I think it's something we should consider in light of the, you know, I mean, they already, they have the $706,000 surplus. It looks like they're getting, um, more money from the state. If the general assembly, you know, the, the amount that the general assembly has increased the, for that education ECS grant. Um, and, uh, and then with this, you know, millions of dollars in federal funds. I think it's uh, that that's something we should consider. You know, Mary, Mary, I don't disagree with you regarding um, using some of those ESSER funds to help pay for stuff that's already in their budget. I just want to reemphasize though the point of those ESSER funds, like you said, it's not really to supplement, but remember, this is a lost year that these kids had. And we have got, I mean, any dollars that are meant for the school districts needs to stay in the school districts, not to offset kind of uh, funding for, even though I know some of it is eligible, like um, some, you know, the operation and continuity of services and local education agencies continue to employ staff. It, yeah, that's eligible, but you know, I have kids in school and it was a lost year. I have a child that has requires special programs. It was a lost year. So anything that, and, and this isn't for this year, this is a three year chunk we have to think about too, that it's not just we can, all right, we can not, we can grab 500 there, a million there, and then that's it. We've got to think of this as a three year block, not just this one budget year, because this is going to take years for them to kind of make up what they've lost in the past year. I'm sensitive to the fact, you know, that they can use this for other funds. And I think that's a worthwhile discussion, but the town is getting a ton of money as well that we could use to offset with that we just went through. I don't want to use dollars that are meant for the school system for us to kind of use as a cash grab to drop the mill rate. And those are board of ed dollars. They need to go to the board of ed. Well, I, I do agree that, you know, the amount they in their like ESSERF to fund wish list, a portion of it is related to like the academic and learning loss, which I think is, you're right, that's what the money is really designed for, or was, you know, one of the large purposes of this money. But I would say more than half of it is for things that have nothing to do with you know, learning loss and ed education. It's more about, you know, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff regarding like behavioral health and mental health and sort of rethinking how we discipline kids and reducing suspensions. You know, it's sort of a lot of these, uh, it's, and I, I mean, tangentially that's related to you know, I guess education or kids, you know, who are, have behavioral problems or mental health issues. And, but you know, the schools already have social workers and psych. I hear, I hear you, but at the same time, I'm looking at the ESSER um, program right now. There's five priorities, academic support, family and community connections, Remote, learn, remote learning, staff development, and the digital divide, every single one with the funds that they requested. I know, well, yeah. I know it, may, it might seem tangential and it doesn't, it's not linear, but it's like they all do qualify. But to your point, I, I get we could use that money and just plop it into their um, line item for staff because technically that is eligible, but it's not. I just want to make sure that we're not just going to that as a cash grab because we can because that's not the spirit of the law that's not the reason why they're getting those funds 
it's to make up for the fact these kids had a lost year and we've got a lot of work to do for the next three years to make up for it. Yeah, and I, and I don't think any of us would support like taking all the, you know, subtracting the entire amount of their ESSER allocation. I just, I, you know, I just think it's, it's worth thinking about, you know, some of the, yeah. having to use and, some of that money. Yeah, and, and even, and I know like, like the, I think uh, Matt Kazaka said, it's not eligible for MBR. So, I mean, there's really, I just put it this way. I don't want to zero out their budget and just say, oh, well, you're getting a ton of federal money because, you know, they, they're, they're, it's a $2 million increase just on salary and benefits, no matter what. So that's kind of the baseline at that point. Right. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I, 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 and, and like, I get it's a tremendous amount of money. And as a taxpayer, I would, I, I'm with you, but at the same time, th there's I would any dollars that we can that the town gets, the town should use towards exactly what you're talking about. But when it comes to the the board side, though, anything that goes to the school, the school should be those are school dollars, and then let's we can kind of have a healthy debate about that space in between. So the budget is basically split almost, you know, 50, 50 between the board and the town side, you know, rough numbers. Yet the board's going to get over $5 million. The town's going to get two, 2 million, 2.5. So, you know, it's just from my involvement with it, it's like <clears throat> the town is constantly cutting things out dump trucks and CIP and all kinds of things that, you know, we feel is necessary to run the town properly. And then that, if we talk about reducing the requested increase on the board of education, it's like, we can't do that. I mean, it's education. So. Well, at the same time, Tommy, you can't compare physical services to the board of ed. I mean, physical services went on this year. You know, and the police department went on this year. There was the board of ed was like turned upside down. They they have the reason why they're getting these funds is because it's like, holy cow, like this, we've got to figure this out or else we're gonna, you know, we're gonna be way behind here. Yeah, they're and they're, you know, they're throwing a ton of money at it, and I get it, but like I don't I don't think we should be taking board of ed dollars and, and just say, well, you you have enough. You're getting enough. Um, it's up to the it's up to uh, Michael Emmett and the Board of Ed to demonstrate to us that we're going to take these dollars and use them wisely. And I think we have to oversee that. But at the same time, the Fed, the, the feds or state are giving them money. It's it's up to them to spend it. And, and I just don't want. I don't think it's up to the us to determine what well, you're getting enough. It's like well, they're they're getting it from a different source. Okay. Um, and then is the ESSER 2 included in that 5 million, Tom? Or what is the ARP directly to the town or to the Board of Ed? What's their share? Did we have that earlier on? Ours is 2.567. I have a breakdown, but I had to restart my computer. Give me a second, I'll try to find. Yeah, I'm looking at SR2 funds of approximately 1.2 million. I think it's in addition to that. Right. I just wanna know what that If we subtract the 1.2 from 5 million, roughly 5 million. I think, but I could be wrong. It's a, it's a different, 
funds. Yeah. Yeah. I think the answer is that's from the state. Yeah, one thing to bear in mind with the ESSER um, is that we have 607,000 in the revenue budget. You know, and so we have to clarify with the board whether they've spent that elsewhere. That came through uh, from CCM and I've included that with ECS and, and the typical run that they give us that we use to do the budget. Um, so when you see that, you'll see that 607, which is half of the 102 for, I think it's for SR2. Right, and they've, they've spent that 607,000 already, right? No. It's in this year's budget, right? The budget we're working on, 22. So they, yeah, that's right. They haven't spent it, but we've included it already in our budget. Right. And, and we were told it's 1.2, right? That number would go up to 1.2. I think correct? there's, I think there's fiscal 22. My understanding is ESSER 2 is 607 in 22 and 607 in 23. For, for a total of 1.2. Okay. And is there funds that the board already received this year? federal funds they said they you know they got the ESSER one funds that was like from the CARES Act that passed back in like April of last year that was a lower amount I think it was a few hundred thousand and then they got some from the state also like last year and then the ESSER two is from the like that federal bill that passed in the like December I think it was right. I have uh, state state funds of two hundred fourteen thousand and ESSER one two fifty four seven fifty nine. That was trying to jot down the numbers as fast as Mike was reading them off. <laughs> Make sure I got them right. ESSER two one point two one four nine nine three. Do we know in the state 214,000 and the ESSER 1, 254, that's been spent already? That's what I wrote down, all spent. Yes, from my understanding, it's all spent already. Okay. And the ESSER 1, they spent uh, 199,000 of the 255, roughly. Oh, that's right. Yep, I did see that. I have written down that for ESSER 1, they have like 55,000 left over, but they anticipate using it, you know, by the end of the school year on uh, like PPE and also some like tutoring or something like that. I, I have that as well. Okay, so they are using some of the funds of the original ESSER one and the state funds from probably about a year ago already for, you know, did he, I'm sorry, I got off of that call, but did he have a breakdown on where he was spending it? If it's, it's for catch up for the kids for this year. For which pot of money? 
uh, ESSER one or the state funding. I, I wrote down that the ESSER one they spent on like PPE for the staff and the students, outdoor tents for the first week of school, yep. plexiglass, iPads for hybrid and remote learning for the younger, youngest kids, HVAC filters, SEL supplies, portable radios. And then for the state money, this is some of the state money. It looks like they sent, did give to, they did pay to physical services for the like sprayers and floor cleaning stuff, scrubbers for the floors, um, PPE, sanitizing stations, bottle filling stations, um, benches and chairs for like social distancing, extra chairs and stuff. So that's uh, 83,000 I had for all that. Okay. You write faster than I do, Mary. <laughs> so was, that was all directly re related to COVID and safety protocols. Okay. Anything else, any other line items or departments where we can, I mean, I, we'll go, we'll dissect these numbers and see what we can figure out and then take some of your savings, Gary. And yeah, I mean, there's some where we can look at recommendation one, two, and three and, you know, merge some of them. So we're not depleting all, but keeping some. Just to uh, clarify, Mike O'Neill, the uh... At the last line, you have the 23,000. That's the savings in medical. Is that correct? Or you have the SMED, other costs? Yeah, that's the, uh, that's CMED. It should be CMED. That's the, uh, that's the item that we left out of the townwide budget. So that's townwide, a townwide radio budget. So that's, that's a increased expenditure. Correct. Okay. That was not in Townwide Radio's proposed budget? Correct. Oh, okay, yeah. CMED contribution. And what was that for again, Mike? That is, uh, CMED is the, um, that's the Regional Emergency Medical Dispatch uh, Unit in Hartford. So they, um, they do medical dispatch through, uh, through the police department. So it's a regional effort and that's our contribution is, is there. And that's the, that's the item we mistakenly left out. We use it and we do, we, yep. we, it's part of, it's not like something new. It's something that is currently in place. Yeah. You can see in the previous years, it's a, it's a pretty steady, I mean, it's probably a good way to think of it as like the health district or probate court. It's just, uh, it's a regional effort that we're involved in. Um, and, you know, there's a, there's a regular contribution that's made every year to help fund that, our share. Okay, so it's like uh, the health district. We yep. all pay into it. Yep, exactly. You're right, Tom. Numbers are going in the opposite direction. Mm. 
маленькая. Uh, tax collection rates, what were we at? I guess, what did we project for a tax collection rate? We used 98.95 last time. Yeah, we're using the same. 98.95. Did we say we were kind of pushing the upper limit there, Mike, as it is? Yeah. Yeah, we went up last year from 98.65 to 98.95. You wouldn't recommend going to 99. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I guess the, the better question could be, if you bear with me, is what would that do to the mill rate? And would it be meaningful in any way? Um, yeah, it kind of adds... At least the way I looked at it, it had quite a bit. Yeah, I'll have to check that. You know, I, I found my worksheet from last year. I will, uh, I will update that and then just do a little kind of a sensitivity analysis to just see what that. You know, you have that uh, ten-year uh, history, and I couldn't yeah. seem to put my hands on that, but. Yep, I just saw it yesterday. So, um, just doing this on the fly, changing that to 99 only takes 0 0.02 off of the mill rate. But I'll, I'll verify everything and represent it. <clears throat> It would be 0 .05 times the adjusted net taxable brand list. Uh, I'm I'm not seeing the engine behind it here. I'm just changing the number up front where it appears on that first revenue page, the stripe page. I know you gave me a you gave me your uh, system of um, calculating that. I think I was doing it a little bit differently. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do a better job than I'm doing. I it. remember the chart you gave me, you know, A, B, and C, and plug the numbers in. But. Yep, I'll, I'll represent that for you. Okay. Anybody else with any ideas? Uh, just one more clarification. We talked about the voice logger. Is that something that we, is that a must have or is that an item that's. I'll, I'll, I'll get you an update on that. Okay. That was in townwide radio. Yes. Wow. Uh, it's Tom White Radio, but it was in uh, CNEF, right? Oh, yep. yes, it's in CNEF. <clears throat> I was just wondering if there's um, an I apologize if you already said it, but if there's a dollar amount for, um, if we were to use the um, the rainy day fund down to 10%, um, like what is that amount? Wait, what is that dollar amount? I'll get that for you. I don't have it okay. off my head, but. I did, I tried to do the math, but I really wasn't sure I did. <laughs> so yeah. thanks. 
And it doesn't that if you if we reduce our uh, budget number, then it's going to be a different dollar amount, right? Right. It would make it would make more available. You reduce the the budgeted expenditures, right? It, so, so it's kind of more, more more depending on what we, you know, add or subtract to the budget. It's going to be more money left over if we, if we cut um, $2 million out of the budget, proposed budget, then there's yeah. going to be more money left in the general fund for that percentage is going to be a higher number. Right. So like it keeps floating as you play around with things it's, yeah it's a lesser it's a it would be a higher dollar amount with the percentage kept at the same for a lesser right budget. yeah i have it i have it at a million four four eighty right now but that's just my Unlike Mike O'Neill, I just wing things. I just I'll get paid to wing it. And I, I don't I only I, don't, I only do it in my rough moments. <laughs> Tom, the key is to when you save your document, write pre-review <laughs> of Mike O'Neill and you're fine. You can get away with anything. Exactly. Uh, I wrote I, I he even told me how to spell CMED and I still spelt it wrong. <laughs> I don't know what TIC is. I know. TIC, I told you, thermal imaging cameras. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I missed that. Thermal imaging cameras, and then the gas meters. Uh, he's all set. He was able to purchase what he needed this year. So, and that's just yeah. to detect whether or not there's a certain uh, level of uh, uh, gas in the air, um, natural gas in the air. Okay. Well, I mean, we can continue to go and go and go and pick and pick, but I think if everybody goes back, takes a look at the notes from tonight, some ideas from, you know, conversations we had about the board ahead, and then each of the departments, if there's anything any other folks want to look at, and explain, have either Gary or Mike or any of the department heads explain further. Get it over to my, uh, Gary. Um, One thing we didn't talk at all about is library. That's a separate, separate budget, right? Yeah. I mean, if if we cut any of their budget, is that then, I mean, it's the, it's the number we give them, it would be up to the library board then to figure out how to allocate it, correct? Correct. Same as the board, Board of Ed. No, no, I, no? I disagree. The Board of Ed has statutory protection that way the, the library doesn't i think it's more of a it's more of the council's recognition of the role of the library board oh. it's similar it's not the same it's okay. there's, no, there's no legal you're not legally bound in the same way but the discussion i guess what i was trying to say is the discussion is not a town discussion the library board discussion right I'm sorry, say again. You know, we're talking about all the town expenditures. This is a separate entity, if you will, the library, right? I, I, again, to me, I think that idea has gained a lot of traction over the last few years. And I think it's a, I think there's rightly a deference that's paid by the council to the library, library board, and the, the fact that there's a board there, but um, I think that's what it is mostly, is, is a sort of a, a professional deference, you know, to, I, I suppose 
you know, you, a person on the council could look at it and say, you know, that any change to that budget is something that should be discussed with, you know, a member of the board or, or the board of the library, but it's just, it's just not the same as the board of ed. Okay. But it's a fine way to view it. It really is, you know, because it is different than other departments. I don't know if we're going to discuss, um, you know, if if anyone is interested in discussing cutting the library board budget. I I know if we're going to be cutting so many departments is something we might want to think about. Although, you know, I, I think we all agree that the library director is, you know, been very, you know, fiscally conservative and tries to, you know, keep her costs down and year over years, you know, there's been minimal increases. Um, Although you know that they do have some alternative funding sources, um, they have a some trust a trust fund that I presume has done very well this year um, that could be used to offset a you know a small cut, but I don't know if that's something that we want to consider, or we could talk about it next time. <laughs> uh, only only reason I brought it up is I. I hate to be the, you know, person that says everybody's got to give a little, but, you know, in the same respect, I hate to say, well, this department should give a lot and these other departments we won't talk about. <laughs> it's like just trying to be a little bit fair, that's all. Be nice to give everybody everything they want, but it's just not feasible. Okay. Well, I think we can wrap it up for tonight. I have some Time to think about this. When's the next meeting, Gary? Uh, Tuesday? The Monday the 10th. Is that at seven or six? 6 p.m. And I think from there we can decide, you know, how the council wants to proceed. We did extend the deadline. So you could throw in another deliberation. Um, you know, depending upon what questions you have, we might need some turn times to put that information together. So you can kind of decide if you need to schedule something since we're no longer on the pressure or um, the 15th, you know, based off of whatever information is still not there, uh, we can always come back and reconvene for a third meeting um, or fourth if necessary. We had, so we're at six on Monday. Is there any way we can move? Oh, wait, hold on. No, I think we might have booked them both at seven. Hold on. I thought I had seven. I may be wrong now. Tell you in a second. I thought it was six at one time, but I'm not sure. It's, yeah. No, they're both, it was seven tonight, seven on Monday. They're both seven. We kept them consistent. Seven and seven. Yeah, because that's a real uh, struggle for me by the time I get home from work to get to that six o'clock meeting. Ah, uh, yeah. You want us to make it earlier? <laughs> you're, you you're open. I wasn't sure if you're going to be like that struggle to get to seven or struggle to stay up past 10. It's kind of a I'm struggling oh, past seven. <laughs> Okay. Well, why don't we uh, plan to go over some of these over the weekend. We'll have some conversations with folks and then uh, rec report back on the Monday, the uh, 10th. Sound good? Yep. Good. Okay. I don't need a motion to adjourn. We never 
officially went in, correct? Yeah, I don't think it's. Let's err on the side of caution. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Okay, we're adjourned. Thanks. Good night. Guys, have a good night. Bye.